So at the time of this recording, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has entered its third day and unfortunately fighting continues to intensify. Now, this crisis is showing us a lot of things, but it's also reminding us that any money, fiat money that is held in centralized bank accounts is ultimately not under our control. It's under the control of centralized bodies. That is to say whether or not we can access it during such times of crisis is completely at the discretion of those banks who control it. Take a look at this, for example, Sparebank, which is the largest bank in Russia, has limited cash withdrawals for its customers to just $20, while Ukrainians are already facing a cash withdrawal limit due to this conflict. People are gonna have different opinions about this, but as we see it, such unfortunate events emphasize the need for a parallel financial system where we can take our money wherever we want. And thankfully, we have access to such blockchain-backed financial systems right now. But which one should you rely on? Well, in this video, we're about to compare Ethereum and Polygon, two of the biggest decentralized finance enabling projects. And by the end of our video, we should be able to conclude where the future of our finance lies. And which of these two heavyweights is the better project, Polygon or Ethereum? Hey guys, happy weekend. My name is Maddie, and this is Altcoin Buzz. We are a crypto investment research company. I'm always proud to say that we've been making millionaires since all the way back in 2017. That's because we were early investors and vocal about our investments in Ethereum, Binance, Cardano, Crypto.com, Engine, Matic Network, Chili's, Quant Network, Polkadot, Uniswap, and a lot of other big winners that netted us 100x profits or more. So if you don't want to miss out on the next potential crypto gem or altcoin moonshot, be sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Channel, Altcoin Buzz and hit the bell to receive notifications because that way you're alerted by YouTube every time we publish new content. And a quick disclaimer, as usual, guys, there's no such thing as a guaranteed return, whether you're talking about cryptocurrency or any other financial space. Yes, with due diligence and deep research, you increase your odds, but there's no such thing as a sure bet. So just as a friendly reminder, this video represents neither financial nor investment advice. With that being said, let's launch right into Ethereum here. If you've been in this space, the crypto space that is at all over these last six months, you already know that despite the scalability issues, the Ethereum network is still attracting a lot of development and investment, of course. In fact, it leads the entire DeFi ecosystem by locking over 56% TVL, that's total value locked. And in the last 12 months, ETH has increased its value by 170%. And at present, it has 415 protocols built on top of it. On the other hand, Polygon has only 3.3% of the total TVL, and it has 180 protocols built on its network but we can't ignore the fact that Polygon is fairly new in the DeFi space and as a result, Matic, that's the native Polygon token, it's grown 4,700% in the last 12 months. Will Polygon continue to grow at this rate and outpace Ethereum or is Ethereum gonna to continue to hold its own and maintain that first mover advantage in the DeFi space? We're looking at the merits of both of these projects in detail. Let's start with a head-to-head -head comparison of what they're all about and their main features. Let's start with Matic here. That's the ticker, right, for Polygon, which is a secondary scaling solution for Ethereum's blockchain. It lets developers connect their Ethereum compatible smart contracts in Polygon. And this blockchain fills the gap of the existing Ethereum network, which suffers from slow transactions, as you guys know, high fees, and Polygon does that without sacrificing on security. Polygon is basically considered an L2 blockchain. So imagine that Ethereum is the highway, which has its own fee rates and transaction speeds. Well, Polygon is like the parallel road, which gives faster and cheaper transactions as an alternative option. With Ethereum, we all know that it was the blockchain that changed everything really in the whole blockchain ecosystem with its launch in 2015. It not only introduced a programmable blockchain where people can develop dApps, but it was the inspiration for many other L1 and L2 blockchains that came later and which ended up having the biggest developer communities in the world. Therefore, the blockchains that came after, they all used Ethereum's technology to build optimized networks with better benefits to users. Let's go back to Matic for a second. Polygon is a proof of stake that's POS blockchain that proposed the following improvements to Ethereum's limitations. First of all, EVM compatibility is one of the most important features of Polygon because it lets Ethereum developers launch their dApps in just a couple of clicks and with faster and cheaper transactions. Interoperability is also a big deal. That lets cross-chain protocols exchange information between Polygon and other blockchains. And also as a feature, you have security modules. This means that Polygon works as a high customizability blockchain that enables cross-chain connections without sacrificing security. 
On the other hand, the Ethereum blockchain allows for the introduction of new concepts such as tokens, decentralized applications, DeFi, and of course, NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And this blockchain is the true leader of Web3 developments. And here are Ethereum's main features. You have a token generator and in the blockchain ecosystem, digital assets are called tokens. So you can tokenize any real world assets that cannot be split into more parts. For example, we all know that you can split a physical piece of art and sell it in multiple pieces. However, that art could be converted potentially into a non-fungible token. And therefore with those tokens, you don't only get a good sell price for it, but you can get royalties every time it's resold. Also, you can use tokens to put in as collateral to get crypto loans. With Ethereum, you also have the new free internet. So nowadays we gain access to free so-called internet services by giving our personal information away. However, using Ethereum, you can access any ecosystem's dApp just with a wallet. No personal info is needed and you'll always be in control of your assets. Ethereum also offers a new financial world order. It's a heavy term, but it's true. The magic of this blockchain is that it provides a real solution to unbanked people that can send, receive, borrow, lend money worldwide really 24 seven without the need of an ID. And this is what we now call decentralized finance or DeFi, which is getting new adopters every day. It's also programmable. Ethereum introduced this feature in POW blockchains via smart contracts, which let developers have all kinds of alternatives like forking of codes. This is where you can reuse code from smart contracts. You can use compatible languages too. Developers don't need to learn Solidity, the official code language of Ethereum to develop decentralized applications. They can do it by using JavaScript and other very well-known languages. At this stage, Ethereum has far more features than Polygon, so it gets the point for this particular round. But that being said, we could see this changing over time. Let's talk about the level of decentralization now. There are so many different blockchains out there and each one really claims to be the one that is truly decentralized, but how do we verify this? Can we measure decentralization. Well, the Nakamoto coefficient was created to know the degree to which a blockchain truly is decentralized. The Nakamoto coefficient represents the number of validators or nodes that have to log off to decrease the blockchain's performance. We know that a decentralized blockchain is the one where its information is recorded in nodes or validators placed in many parts of the world. So the more nodes, the more decentralized the blockchain will be. But for comparison purposes, it's more appropriate to use this indicator. Therefore, let's see how the Nakamoto coefficient is manifested for both Polygon and Ethereum. So with Polygon, the coefficient was measured in August of 2021, and it gives us a result of two, considering that the number of validators are 100 in this blockchain, which is actually a very low level. You can see it being outpaced here by a whole slew of probably what are familiar names. On the other hand, Vitalik Buterin measured this indicator in December of 2020, even further back, and it got Ethereum that is between 25 and 34. And it should also be considered that at that time, Ethereum had 7,400 nodes. So at the level of decentralization, Ethereum wins again because this blockchain has many more node validators than Polygon, at least for the time being. Okay, let's talk latest developments here. Polygon is always incentivizing Web3 hackathons to make their developer community even bigger. And the prize for the latest hackathon is $250,000. Another hackathon also recently occurred in Miami as well. Also, Polygon is working to develop NFTs on its platform. And an example of that is the partnership between Prada and Adidas. Moreover, SocialStack, which is a code-free social token platform, is building a community token that will incentivize holders to make positive actions. Okay, but what about Ethereum? Well, they released a set of audited libraries called Ethereum Cryptography 1.0 that will empower more secure projects. And furthermore, Ethereum's blockchain is being used by UNICEF, so startups can develop Web3 software solutions more easily. But you know, to be fair, at this point, Polygon has had more developments recently in these last few months because it's a blockchain that's growing more and more and its ecosystem is on a bit of a roll compared to Ethereum's, at least lately. So we give this round to Polygon. Okay, let's discuss tokenomics. At the time of this recording, Polygon's native token, Matic, is in the 16th position of cryptos in the overall market cap ranking. And since its launch in 2017, Matic has rapidly positioned itself as the first low cost and fast alternative to Ethereum. Nowadays, the token has accumulated more than $10.5 billion in market cap with about $980 million moved in transactions in these last 24 hours 
More important is the fact that its max supply is 10 billion tokens. Matic also has the following use cases. You can participate in DeFi, gaming, NFTs, exchange protocols, and more. Matic is used for transaction fees and governance voting. And moreover, anyone can buy Matic practically from any centralized exchange. Okay, switching gears and talking about Ethereum, we all know that Ether is the native token of Ethereum's blockchain, which created the ERC-20 token standard. And since it was created in 2015, ETH has always ranked as the second crypto with the highest market cap in the cryptocurrency market. At the time of this recording, ETH has accumulated more than $332 billion in market cap, and it moved a pretty astounding $15.5 billion in the last 24 hours. And despite the fact that ETH has no maximum supply, this token has always been considered, along with Bitcoin, as a long-term investment asset for being projects that have the most robust technical fundamentals in the entire system sector. Therefore, ETH has the following use cases. You have transaction fees, you have governance voting, you have participation in DeFi and DAOs. You can buy NFTs, non-fungible tokens. You can also buy ENS domains, if that's something that you're in the market for. And of course, you can also have a secure digital identity. Just like Matic, buying ETH is very easy because just about every single exchange in the world has it available. You're not going to run into any trouble acquiring Ethereum. But in conclusion, we consider that Matic wins this particular battle because despite the fact that the use cases are about equivalent, Matic has a limited max supply and Ethereum doesn't, which is a strong point for Matic's price movement in our opinion. Therefore, we are tied Ethereum to Matic to, and things are getting interesting here. Okay, now we're talking about the ecosystem. Polygon's ecosystem has different decentralized applications when it comes to DeFi, NFTs, gaming, DAOs, dev tools, oracles, and wallets. But here are the most popular ones. So for DeFi, you have Aave, Curve, Finance, QuickSwap, and SushiSwap. For NFTs and gaming, you have OpenSea, Atari, Decentraland, Gala Games, and Emoka Brands. For DAOs, you have Blockonomist, Eldorado, BlobDAO, and Idaval Network. For wallets, you have MetaMask, Wallet Connect, Fortmatic, and Token Pocket. And for Oracles, you have Umbrella Network, Certic, Chainlink. For developer tools, you have Lossless, Validator, Hardhat, and The Graph. It's quite a list. On the other hand, Ethereum's ecosystem is one of the biggest in the entire ecosystem. Here are the most important things to consider. For DeFi, you have Compound, Oasis, Aave, and Uniswap. For NFTs, you have OpenSea, Rarible, POAP, and Audius. For gaming, you have Axie Infinity, Gods Unchained, Dark Forest. With the Metaverse, they have Decentraland and Crypto Voxels. For tools, you have ENS, that's Ethereum Name Service, Gollum, and Gitcoin. It's important to say that many dApps in both ecosystems aren't working in an exclusive blockchain. In other words, they're cross-chain applications. At this point, Ethereum does have a bigger ecosystem. However, Polygon's ecosystem has a lot more potential in our opinion. So for that reason, we're giving Matic the point here based on the momentum that it currently reflects. Okay, and lastly here, we're considering some of the latest partnerships. For Matic, there are dApps like GoGoCoin that have partnered with Polygon to develop very rare NFTs that can get profits up to 45%. And also, Lido Finance has partnered with Polygon to let users stake Matic in a secure and decentralized way. On the other hand, in Ethereum, there really haven't been any notable partnerships announced in the social media accounts of the Ethereum Foundation in the last three or so months. And so at this point, Polygon has had more partnerships than Ethereum during these last few months. We don't know if that's gonna to continue to be the case, but at least for the time being, we're giving Polygon the win in this category. So there you have it, guys. After analyzing these six factors, we can conclude that Polygon has much more potential to scale sustainably in the short and long term. But two major questions right now have been thorns in the side of Polygon. What will happen to Polygon after Ethereum 2.0? And is Polygon's performance degrading? We have seen a couple of issues there. So we are actually going to explore the answers to both of those questions in an upcoming video. Stay tuned for that. We're going to deep dive into Polygon, Ticker, Matic. But in the meantime, guys, if you're still watching, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to receive notifications. Once again, these are our opinions. These are expressions of our own enthusiasm, but never financial advice. That being said, we do wish you all the very best of luck if you choose to invest. Check out these other couple of videos, guys, which should be popping up right about now. Have a great start to your weekend. Stay safe. And as always, we do hope to see you again soon in our next video. Take care.